Danny, uh, so contractually, you're obligated to, to record an extra episode of Mob Rules every time you moonlight on another podcast, such as uh, Chapter Tactics, where you guys were talking about murder or something like that. I forget. Yeah, it was, it was like 80% murder, like 15% tactics. And I really got a bum deal with that. Like, I'll tell you what, I don't get paid. Like, I have a salary here. It's not like an appearance fee like I charge other places. So um, it's pretty hard. It's pretty harsh on my bottom line. Like my time expenditure to like content like creation is bad for mob rules. It, it, well, it's, you know, our content creation is bad in general. Um, but yeah, well, thanks. That's, that's fair. Everyone can thank Pablo for this very special episode of mob rules. And now I say everyone should blame um, blame ta- blame Pablo, and you think yeah, that would be yeah. easier to say, but it really isn't, um, because as part of Danny's writer, uh, he also has a guest that he gets to bring with him too, uh, which just makes this even more complicated. That's right. I, yeah, that means there's like three people using the Alaska internet at the same time. Um, <laughs> which the is are going to get angry. Heck, heck yeah, yeah. GCI is going to appease the gods and export the internet to the Philippines too. Um, that's a little inside Alaska <laughs> joke. Uh, but yeah, so we, <laughs> we came back for the special episode. Uh, we were a little late on our review of the Drakari Codex and the, the, the great new Charadon section. So we decided to bring in uh, someone to tell us about the lore behind Charadon as bonus punishment for all of the people who have us on their subscription feed. Um, Hello. Hey, gotcha, suckers. Gotcha. Sorry, <laughs> I, have, I have uh, no idea how to time any of this. My bad. No, no, you're all good. Neither do we. And I've been doing this for five years at this point. Um, so now it just works out, man. You're, you're all good. Yeah, you're all oh, good. Thank God. So we're here with Taylor uh, to talk about lore. And you know, when you have someone called Taylor talking about <laughs> lore, I think the only thing we can <sighs> do is call this segment. Taylor talks about Warhammer stuff. Welcome, Taylor. Hello. It's I'm me. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I'm going to talk about, like, this book. That's going to be sick. Yeah. You may remember me from Three Minutes of Shrieking, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> That's what I did. That's what I did last time I was here. Well, I think, uh, personally, uh, because Danny and I both know you, we know you for much longer than Three Minutes of Shrieking. <laughs> it's a lot more shrieking. <laughs> it's just the recorded parts. I can get yeah. Listen. Listen. All right. Yeah, or near the end, like it'll be fine. It'll it's be fine. great. It was, it was, I thought you yeah, said yeah. you were gonna like skip to the end of the book and just be like, the war continued. No, <laughs> what's that? I, hey, hey, man, come on. War never you're changes. Still, you're That's still in my thing. The book. <laughs> oh, let me check. Let me check. So yeah, usually we skip past the lore parts of the books because they're the, the boring, non-crunchy parts. But this book's actually pretty good. Uh, and Taylor, you have a like a ravenous need to consume all knowledge of 40 K. Uh, yeah, so it fills the hole in my heart for sure. Does, <laughs> does it though? No, <laughs> like just, not one, at all. just one more book. Just Warhammer. I Crime. lied to you. It's like maybe yeah. Warhammer crime will Dude. fill the hole. Warhammer hard and not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Warhammer crime is so good. It's so good. Anyway, is it like dealing with Jay walkers and stuff is it like Warhammer petty crime. Dude, Actually, I fucking the, hate jaywalkers. This, the second book does begin with someone on the road being torn in half. So, I mean, yes. Ish. Right? Littering. Okay. That's what jay, That's what jaywalking is when you cross when you the street. torn in half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally, jaywalking is when you get cut in half. I'm not really familiar with the laws. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> So tell us what is going on in the Cardon Shardon. Uh, I'm gonna say Cardon. I'm also going to say Shardon. That's fine. I said that for no effect at all. I'll switch between. I'm sure. Sorry, um, when we were recording so, the uh, the review of the product, every time Danny said Charidon, I said Caridon, and every time he said Caridon, I said Charidon. But then we realized perfect. we had like a tiny memory card for our video camera. Uh, so then I was like, "Shit, we're running out of room. <laughs> Let's stop this now." Oh. You have to stop saying stop. Chardon. We have to stop making jokes immediately. <laughs> you have to stop saying Chardon. Shut up. Anyway, 
Okay, so yeah, so what is this book about? This book is about the uh, mainly Nurgle invasion of uh, the Cardon Sector. The Cardon Sector is named for the uh, planet that's at the center. It's taken over by orcs. Orcs don't play a huge role in this book, but they do show up more than not at all, which is honestly better than I was, I was expecting. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I believe Snagrod is the leader. He's like the Arc Arcanist. Arc Arsonist. Oh, cool. There we go. Yeah, so he's around. He hasn't shown up yet, though. Um, so uh, Metallica is not only a band, copyright, trademark. Please don't mention also... them on the podcast. God, they'll sue us so quickly. We can't afford a Metallica lawsuit. <laughs> oh, fuck. We don't uh, have receipt. Napster money. <laughs> oh, no. We don't even have I'm MySpace to... money. I'm headed to Pirate Bay right now. <laughs> um <laughs> So okay, so Metallicans are a lot like the uh, they're like the Necrons of um, of the Admech. They're they're hyper obsessed with purity and of not only of the machine but also of their house. Um, they irradiated their world to such an extent that it's only metal. Like you know that episode of SpongeBob where he's like future. It's like the whole world is chrome. It's all like that. Um, they they don't allow anything to live on Metallica at all besides like their servants or whatever and um they they like radiation a lot it's kind of a it's kind of a big deal to them they think it's pretty cool uh when is that guy who was so irradiated in the short stories leading up to Engine War when is he going to show up again when is that going to happen GW let me know maybe going to be like the chapter master upgrade maybe Please? he died the from chapter. all of the radiation where no it's, it's his no they put him in a box cuz he was too irradiated but he was like, please just let me spread the glorious radiation of the Omnissiah. And then everyone near him died. And he was like, come on, just, I'm just going to walk around. Just, let, let, me, just let me get out of here for a minute. Luckily, all of the Forge World people are like, let me just touch it. Let me just open the box. Right, yeah. <laughs> and then they did. And then they all died again. And it was awesome. Uh, all of the Metallicans dying is going to be a theme with this book. Uh, I oh, don't know. <laughs> Because it's I not very some notes. It's not very PG uh, thirteen anymore to just have sisters of battle be the sacrificial lambs. So now it's just metallic. Oh, that, ha- oh, that happens too. Oh, good. Don't worry. It doesn't even have Rob Schneider in it. How can it be PG thirteen? <laughs> oh no. Yeah, don't worry. The plenty of sisters die here. In fact, actually, one of the coolest parts of the book, in my opinion, is let me flip loudly. That's good audio content. Uh, <laughs> one of my is favorites. the. I just, I just want you to be like, uh, le, like, let me flip loudly. Here's the page. Great audio oh, content. Yeah. yeah, show it. Oh, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Oh, yeah, cool. Oh, awesome. man. No further explanation. Oh, needed. that's like the order of battle? Yeah. Cool. Why is this 40 pages in? That's weird. Um, and there is, it's like a who's who of, <laughs> of, uh, of Imperial forces <laughs> and, and also chaos, but we'll get to that. Um, like, there's like... There's five missions of sisters just kind of hanging around. There's like 15 more. Uh, 15 more. The main sister lady is called Yog Hilde. Yog. I don't know if I'm Yog. Yeah, Yog Hilde. I don't know if I'm saying that right. The Germans or wherever that word comes from. I'm sure it's Europe something. Pog Hilde. Can correct me if they want. Right. Pog Hilde. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. She's actually great. We'll get to that again. I'm gonna say that. Oh, this is going terribly. Um, the Ultramarine <laughs> version. <laughs> The Ultramarines are here. The Sons of Medusa, which is cool because that's a... Um, oh, yeah. Iron Hands. Right, yeah. They don't show up here. They don't get to do stuff. That's cool. Uh, that's White... a bad ab, right? <laughs> yeah, the no. Bad ab war? Yeah. Uh, the White Scars are here. Also double cool. Uh, yeah. Two of my favorite chapters. Uh, super interestingly, um, a strike force of the Brazen Drakes are here. And oh. if you remember the Brazen Drake... Yeah, right? They're the, they're the guys who all the custodians killed. That's not expanded upon at all. They're just like a little footnote in the thing, but like, that's neat. Maybe I like that, that feels, that feels a little bit of the hole. That's cool. Maybe the, uh, custodians, um, just put their names in there to pretend like they didn't murder the entire chapter for, uh, for heresy. And like, they're maybe, there. They're, I swear. Yeah, we, they, they, you know what? It's fine. They went there. I promise. <laughs> Can we see them? Nope. They're on this moon. No. There's active redaction happening in front of my eyeballs. So like maybe, right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the house. Uh, unfortunately, honestly, uh, one of the one of the most disappointing things about this book is that the Drukari aren't actually in it very much. They, 
Um, they're in the very beginning. So, okay, so let me, let me just go through the story instead of just randomly talking about cool things. Oh, man. Okay, so uh, let me look at my patented notes. Um, the, uh, so Metallica escapes uh, most of the destruction coming from the Great Rift. They were, they're far, so they're in, they're in like the galactic, like south. Oh no, I'm not going to pretend I know what directions are. They're, uh, they're down into the left. Um, that is so both a escape. direction and a, a knowledge thing, sir. Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. They, uh, <laughs> they, uh, their whole planet didn't explode, unlike most planets during this time. But uh, they did lose time. Um, not really sure what that means. They don't have any time anymore. They had to make up their own time. Uh, and it's, their time. It's oh, watch yeah. time all MFT over again. for Metallica yeah. standard time. <laughs> it. Yeah, it's uh it's me it's it's Mesicron. Me Mesicron. Uh Metallic and circumscribed chronology. Guess how it's measured? It's awesome. Is I'll it tell you. It's measured parsecs? by uh labor No, it's measured by labor cycles. How many hours <laughs> did you work? I don't That's know. That's how many. I don't know time doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> don't worry about it. Your shift's over. That was one. Uh <laughs> So at the beginning, there are like 850, that's backwards, that doesn't make any sense. There are like 855 uh, LRC, me, 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 Cron. Yeah, time. Um, what else? So, okay, so uh, one of my favorite bits of the book is the, they're in the first warning sections, it's talking about like all of the, the precursor signs. Uh, people are exploding into gore. Uh, Filth and gore is filling all the water. People are turning into jelly. You know, regular warning signs. I um, really want to see someone uh, turn into literal jelly. Just like a big old mold of like cherry jelly. Just read this book. It's right there. Hell it's, yeah. It says it right here. Yeah, you know what else says? It also says engorge, engorgism. That word is in this book. It's I really right want here. to proxy uh, jelly babies instead of nurglings now. Is yeah. that is that a death card thing in Gorgism? Uh, let me just read uh, the fear or system endured an outbreak of bubonic and Gorgism that turned living flesh to rancid jelly and bloated internal organs until they burst. Imagine you. So it's just kind of a, just just kind of a thing that's happening. Imagine your dong turning to jelly and engorging, and then so and you're then both exploding. Well, the second thing I'm familiar with, but the first. <laughs> thing ah! The third thing you're very familiar with, too. The explosion? The explosion at the end, yeah. The detonation, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, one of the descriptions is of a cult that, uh, who cares what the fuck they're called, they all die. Um, <laughs> they rise up. They rise up with their cult powers, and then this, the remaining of the sentence is that, oh, some miners killed them. Don't worry about it. Don't ask me any more questions. Oh, no. The miners killed them. Stop awesome. talking to me. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, the only uh, miners I know then, are Gene Steeler cult. Like that literally. Interestingly, I think, I think there are ninety five percent of the mining workers of the Imperium all have three yeah. or more arms. Well, let me tell you. Five pages later, there is a uh, the it continues the story um, of the miners and their mining and their friends and their working for the emperor. Uh, but that little storyline is actually probably my favorite part of the book. Anyway, where was I? Good Lord. This is, oh, man. oh God. <laughs> Taylor, you're already raising uh, okay. the quality of the podcast by like 30%. I, and I'm about to cut off your microphone because it's setting an unprecedented I, standard. I just, <laughs> I just don't believe you. I just don't believe you at all. I choose death. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> uh, Fathom is mentioned. Fathom is nearly completely unimportant, but it's really cool. It's a, a water planet that no one can find the bottom of, and it, no matter how much water they take from it, it continually has the same amount of water. Uh, this means nothing, and it's just a little cool fluff piece, but I like it a lot. Um, cool. It is really cool. Uh, all right, what else happens? Uh, people are continuing to be sick. Their engorgisms continue. Uh, Clang, uh, Archimago's Clang, doesn't like that. Not a fan. Not a fan uh, of Jellicentitis. So <laughs> yeah, gross. Uh, he's not a fan <laughs> of that. 
And so he's like, I mean, <laughs> gelatin tights. <laughs> Gross. Oh, Thank you, John. That's what they call when it happens to your dong is gelatinitis. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at this picture as you say that. Can you see this picture? That's engorgism. Gross. Mm. 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 Uh, so yeah, visual podcast content is my favorite kind. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing here. I'm just teasing with you, dude. You're doing great. Oh, oh fuck. Okay. Uh, so, anyway, uh, people are continuing to get sick, and the Archimagos of Metallica, the, the Lord Fabricator General, is like, eh, I don't really like that. That's pretty cringe. Um, but I can't just rad scour all the planets. They, I mean, uh, uh, skin is gross, but I can't just arbitrarily murder populations. And then what happens next? Uh, more people get sick and being alive and having skin and bones and non-metallic parts <laughs> is determined the cause. And Clang is like, yeah, cool. Rad scouring. Let's do it. Uh, so he has special rad scouring <laughs> arcs that uh, they fly over the planet and they just draw big radiation on it. And then everyone dies horribly. And that's it. And just don't be sick. Dude, I this love a, I love the part where you're like, yeah, I can't just rad scour the whole planet. That would be really kidding. JK. But what if? Well, what if <laughs> what if being a stupid meatbag was the cause? Oh yeah, I could rad scour. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Unleash the arcs, kill them all. I like the you know, the the underlying cause for having cancer was having organs that could get cancer. So the only <laughs> cure for it was to not have organs anymore. Yes, now you're getting it. This is the future I, I, of socialized medicine, ladies and gentlemen. Really, this is what socialists want, really believe. I hope you're ready for the death camps. <laughs> oh, I mean panels. Sorry, I mean panels. <laughs> oh, fuck. I, mean, I meant camps. I was wrong. No, <laughs> no. Camps. All right, cool. Where are we now? All right, yeah, great. Awesome. Uh, the, extra, the excruciators, uh, I bet they're fun at parties, are introduced. Um <laughs> A bunch of demons or whatever, just kind of like I mean, they just kind of kill all the astropaths in the system. So they, they, I mean, the the excruciators have to go deal with that. Uh, they never show up again. They're talked about like twice. Great. Um, they go fight the demons, and then immediately, immediately after, immediately, uh, Kling is like, "All right, the cardinal world, pretty, pretty gross, pretty cringe, feel pretty." Super important to the Imperial faith in the, in the region. But man, do they have a lot of skin down there. And God, I just <laughs> don't like that. <laughs> oh, man, I love the skin crusade. I like that. I, like, I, I just, just imagine him to be like some OCD knee freak. He's just like, you have a lot of skin. I don't like that. Get away from me with your skin. Bring in the radiation cleanses. Uh, so he's like, all right, what if we just rad cleanse that place too? Yeah, great. Let's do it. So he sends uh, he sends the the barges to like one of the most important imperial faith places in the sector, and he's like, "Whatever, it'll be fine. I can kill them all. I don't care. I'm a robot. <laughs> Stupid skin beings can't touch me." Uh, immediately after that, uh, Typhus shows up. Uh, he, he's just here. He's here now. Um, he was sent by. Okay, so Typhus has gathered a frankly gigantic enormous, um, fitting the engorgism. Uh, giganto, th there we go. Giganto gorge gorgism. He's got a giganto gorgeous am amount of uh, forces with him. He was uh, commanded by Abaddon. The reasons are not stated, but a bunch of stuff is given as a possible thing. Like, ah, uh, maybe he's jealous. Maybe he thinks Abaddon is just really cool and cooler than him. And man, he's just so huge and cool. Maybe that's cool. And also maybe he wants to turn Abaddon to Nurgle. That could be cool. Uh, sure. Not confirmed, but Abaddon is huge. That is confirmed. True. Um, he is he's not big small. Way. Yeah, he is not he's small. gigantic. You see that man's small? And I know uh, when I, I'm being told to do something by someone who has frequently turned down all four Chaos Gods repeatedly... He was like, well, maybe this time he'll fall to Nurgle. <laughs> if I do his bidding hard enough, 
It's like a bee maybe, in his spouse. Maybe, maybe no. no. But then... But if. <laughs> maybe JK. But... What if? But. Uh, so Typhus is here. Uh, he brings along his uh, best friend. This isn't next, but I need to talk about it. He brings along his uh, best friend, uh, Lord Thraxo Plasmox. Man, Death Guard have the Hell worst yeah. names. Holy shit, they're bad. What, no, what your, you, that, those are your buddies, dude. I know, they it's have the, the worst names. Like, it's the cat disease. Like, oh, plasmosis. I wonder if this space marine <laughs> captain will fall to uh, Nurgle. Oh, I don't know. What's his name? And it's like Scabathrax, like gonorrheal of oh. Plagio. I'm like, will he fall? Who knows? So Scabarous this guy's <laughs> this guy's contagion, right? The toxoplasmosis guy. Right. Is he makes you sensitive to bright light? And uh, also, like, walk, like, away from corners and that kind of stuff into the middle of rooms. Imagine how bad it's it would be deadly. that if your contagion was something that could be cured by a slightly dark pair of glasses. Like, everyone's Frankly like, unstoppable. Uh, we're Death Guard, you are less tough, or I'm Mortarian, you have minus 15 buffs. You're like, I'm Plasmy, uh, you need to wear sunglasses indoors. <laughs> Take a you look like an idiot head. now. <laughs> uh, don't don't you look stupid? Uh, so remember how you guys were clowning on Fraxel Plasmox? Remember oh, how yeah. that just happened right oh, now? Yeah, like, yeah right, right about right. twenty right. seconds ago. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, the book does that. The yeah. book does that too. Oh, it does. Yeah, he sucks. Yeah, he sucks. <laughs> what is is he? It. Just like a Lord of Contagion or something like that, or is he just? He is a Lord of Virulence. Specifically. Oh, of course, the guy I'm trying to make work. Yeah. He's clowned around. Right. <laughs> super clowned on right hey guys we're uh, gonna release a brand new model let's make some cool fluff for him and I'm like okay cool we could do that or we could treat him like a joke throughout the entire campaign what if <laughs> but what, what if, if? <laughs> <laughs> what if he gets lured into a bunch of battles he could easily win but chooses not to and then yeah that's it that's the whole thing great it's, uh so type typhus shows up Sure, and then we immediately start talking about start talking about uh, Lilith because she's here, very vaguely. Uh, so this is just like a little end to the um, the new starter set that I imagine is coming out that we don't have the fluff for yet. But it kind of just it just tells you right here that all the sisters die. Yeah, that's it. That's the end. <laughs> when do they not though? Like, let's be honest there. They yeah, you're, you're, you're so right. I feel Black Library um, has that on copy paste. So whenever you hit Control V on a Black Library author's uh, keyboard, it's just and then all the sisters died. Yeah. How could could Palantine? I don't remember her name. Defeat Lilith in this exciting episode? No, she's she's dead. The next episode, she's gone. I'm sorry, guys. And you sick I'm bastards! Out, there's plot armor. You sick I'm bastards sorry. who are her grossed over like Lilith's feet. In her new miniature? Gross. <laughs> Just stop. You're going to make me like green stuff shoes on. I can hear you. I, I hear you can get toxoplasmosis through your feet. I hear that can happen. <laughs> Sadly, he's very ineffective. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, okay, so yeah, all the sisters are dead. And then we talk about like numbers for a while. And God, my brain just glasses over. I can't do it. Uh, but we are introduced to Marshall Tertian, Tertian, Tersh, Tertian, Tertian for sure. Three, three's are a thing in this book. Would you have thought? I wouldn't have. Talk about Nurgle? No way, threes are a thing. Anyway, it's a sacred number. Of Nurgle should. is three yeah. plus four. Listen, what about what seven? About, what about that, seven? Come on. Yeah, minus uh, minus yeah. three is four, or minus three is three plus one. Three is a sacred number. Maths. Maths. Math. Whoa, dude! Absolutely you just blew my mind. Hell yeah. Yeah, so basically, this paragraph says that Tertian is cool because he's the new model and he's cool. Uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> he has some cool stuff and he's cool. I really hope right, that it's just like I hope that the paragraph that you just now read, that we're fifty percent of the way through this book, <laughs> <laughs> I I love that. Like I hope yeah. the paragraph in that book just says, "And we released a new model of him, so he's cool. Trust us, guys. Really." Give it a couple of years, we'll have a book about him. Man, God, I I fucking love Skatari books so much. 
They're so rad. Anyway, ah, ah, joke, funny. Because they're uh, rad. So one, yeah, because they exude radiation at all times. So get close, they'll take minus one toughness. No, um, no, you don't get contagions too. That's my thing. You no, don't I already get have that. it. I had it. Be- I had it before you. Damn it! It was mine. I had it before you. It was mine. Give it to me. Uh, one interesting thing is that uh, Typhus straight up says that um, the the Admex faith in like their in you know like their religion or whatever is strong enough to just straight up beat um, empiric stuff, like giving credence to their faith being an, uh, an effective weapon against the warp, which I think is cool. Um, similar to how the sisters have been confirmed recently to actually like do miracles and not just be like, aha, she just got fucking lucky as shit, Lamau. Um, like their faith is actually like affecting the world around them, which I think is cool. I think that's a fun bit of world building. Yeah, so, that's dope. yeah so like scissors aren't like uh, a shitty cultist shoots at them with an auto gun and misses by a mile. And it's like, yes, the emperor saved me from that bullet. That <laughs> landed 17 feet did away. You, did you know that the most important sister to ever exist got shot and killed by some shitty cultist with an auto gun? It's true. Who is the that's most how, important sister to ever exist? That's how uh, St. Catherine died. She's got a big model. She's in a, she's in her coffin because she got shot by a cultist and died. Really? Really? Would would you yeah. really carry around someone's corpse all the time with a bunch of relics because they died to like Jim she Stenson, like Jim Stenson, uh, a colony worker who decided to worship corn? Bobby Forearms really threw that bullet good, and now she's dead. <laughs> no gun, just a thrown bullet. Yeah, she just throw, he just hurls it. Uh, <laughs> she's also the only sister mar- matriarch to go out like that. Like, okay. So the Bloody Rose one uh, dies on a pile of the corpses of the people who killed her, which, yeah, great, let's do it. Um, St. Lucia just got fucking tortured to death, but she didn't say anything, and that was cool or whatever. And, yeah, so uh, St. Catherine, only one to go out like a nerd. Very cringe. One tortured to death, refused to scream. The other one punked by a model you can't even buy. No, fuck. Give me Bobby forearms. I would love that as a model. Uh, okay, so also, that's just a Gene Steeler cultist with like a mobster hat on. I actually have that model downstairs. It's fucking great. Johnny Gee, forearms, so awesome. Yeah, he's he's got the guns. The blim blim. <laughs> he shoots characters every time he gets a hit. He gets an extra hit. He rolls one. He kills a model. Anyway, so uh, oh, also another amazing name in this book is there's a Cadian Colonel. And her first name doesn't fucking matter, but her last name is Broski. She's Colonel Broski. She's Colonel Broski of the Cadians. <laughs> fucking Broski. Do you think like her commanding officer runs up and be like, Broski, what's happening here? It's really confusingly like casual. Do you know what happens to her? What happens? Do you, do you know? Oh, do, do they open some radi- cool ones? No, those are radiation arcs that they've been using to like gas their own people for fun. They just kind of drop it on her. Oh, the plague marines do. The bad men. The bad men just drop the one of your er- eradication arcs. So on top of the hive she's in. Not the good people who are murdering everyone who have skin uh, to stop them no, from having yeah. cancer, but the bad people who destroyed right. the cancer giving ships. Um, right, the people who already have cancer, and thus more skin. <laughs> this episode will be titled Too Much Skin. <laughs> you could just remove it. I feel like you can just take it all off. I feel like it's fine. I, re- I really feel like it's okay. My skin? Are, Are you, you talking about need skin? It? No. Or... Okay. Yeah. I, I kind of need that, you, though. Oh. No, you take it off. You replace it with glorious machine metal or whatever. I don't really care. You just take it off. That's all Dude, I'm saying. You know where I worked? You know how syrup would get in those like servos and motors and stuff? That would get gunked up so quick. No, thank or you. it would be the glorious oil that cleans it. We don't know how the AdMech works. <laughs> My coffee tastes oily. No, it doesn't. Shut up. Get moving before I rat arc you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I give off a minus one toughness aura. Don't stand in it or you'll die. You have point one two shifts to get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about your skin for point six seven Nisi crons, and I'm fucking pissed about it. Dude, that is literally like I will use that from now on as measurements of time. Like, when are you going to be at the store, dude? I'll be there in like point two Nisi crons. If we take a <laughs> Great. W- one Nisi is eight hours. I'm assuming well twelve because Imperium. 
Yeah. Right. For yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so also Typhus is here. I probably said that like 20 minutes ago. Jesus fucking Christ, hurry up. You did. Really, you're ruining the show. Um, so <laughs> it's Typhus cute is here. that you think you did that. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's uh, his big his big old of you, right? I assume that you've ruined the show when there are I, many times that John and I have had to ru- many opportunities for John and I to ruin the show. I truly believe in my power to destroy like things that are fun and just be terrible. So don't take this away from me. Um, Fine, Jesus. <laughs> Fine, whatever. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Shit! Oh God, he's getting sad. Um, so okay. there are three metallic gates. There are three of them. Three. Do you see this? No, not one, not two, not this... four. There's three. three. The sacred number of Nurgle. Uh, ooh, oh, mm. uh, and they're, they're basically impregnable. Obviously uh, they could never be breached. Uh, so why don't they just leave? I'm, I'm confused. So, uh, Typhus plans a, th- a three, a tri pronged assault. They never say three. They say try. I, he's, he's going to try to do it. Yeah. Fucking try hard. <laughs> now we just uh, imagine like Typhus is like a Mr. Meeseek style thing, like the ooh wee. <laughs> Gross. I really like the idea of that. Existence is pain for a Typhus. <laughs> I don't know, man. Let me find his picture. God, his picture's so fucking awesome. He actually does feel pain. Uh, the art in this book, by the way, is amazing. Yes. Wait, this is an audio. This is an audio form. No, it's okay. If you purchase the the book, which you absolutely should, the the oh, art man, of Typhus on the page is amazing. And as someone who has like been looking at the Warhammer art site to find some cool Death Guard art, but only had that really not okay Biologist Putrefire image from the old Death Guard book, which I don't really like, and like a couple of like wide army shots. Yeah, uh, GW, sure. please make that Typhus picture available. I will buy that like immediately. It's a uh, for for an unbelievably grotesque and ugly man. He was really photogenic. It's because he keeps his armor uh, his armor pretty. He's very clean. It's credit question mark cataphract fine armor. Yeah. <laughs> so Typhus shows up with his no. buddies, and the whole thing. The next like five pages are uh, all of the Imperials died. Oh. Everyone who's here, they're dead now. All of them are died. What is the worst way they died? Uh, okay, so there's this. Uh, remember Yogile? We were talking about her earlier. Oh yeah, yeah, Swag. She's here yep, now. Yep. Yeah. So uh, she gets to- cornered. Her and her preceptor get cornered by tor- Typhus on a roof, uh, and they have the zombies go sit in the um, the inf- the air ducts of her ships, so she can't turn them on. That's not a joke. Um, and so she's on a roof with her friends. And he's also there. And uh, so they're fighting. And she's just, she's not dying, which that's weird. She's just kind of a normal lady. I mean, she's also on fire because of her big faith time. But I mean, you know. She's on fire. (laughs) She's She's a normal lady, but she is burning like the human torch. Well, her her sword is on fire. And she's got what I assume to be like that upgrade that they can take. I don't know. Hunger Games reference? Uh, You know I never watched that movie. So I yes, it is. Books, so yes, uh, she's double burning on fire. She's okay though. She's got armor on, uh, and she stabs <laughs> the absolute shit out of uh, out of Typhus, uh, and he's just kind of like sad. He's like, "Whoa, what do you? Well, hello, what do you mean? I can't get, <laughs> I can't get stabbed. That's stupid. You made me uh, bleed my own blood. Uh, hello." <laughs> <laughs> And so he uh, he makes his bees eat her, uh, and while his bees are eating her, she's looking at him like the whole time. I guess they they eat the eyes last or whatever. And he had she's like the fucking... strongest direction for the entire time that there was he eye was, contact. He was fucking spooked, dude. He was like, oh my gosh, gosh, she's still fucking looking at me. That's <laughs> weird. That's fucking strange. Stop doing Most that. Most people uh, close their eyes after they get eaten by bees. Yeah, after they get hit by the plague bees. Also, now uh, so, it's it's canon that the destroyer hive is actually literally just bees. Yeah, it's just thousands of bees for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's They're not what, even special <laughs> bees. It's like regular bees. Is this typhus? Regular bees trapped hey, the man, queen in one of his exhaust ports. Special. 
right now. We have to really watch our bees and Typh- we do have to really Typhus big environmentalist. Bees. Yeah, he's bringing back the bee population for sure. D- Nurgle's all about life and all that. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Uh, so they eat her skin or whatever, and then they also eat her internal <laughs> organs or whatever. But not her eyes. Never her eyes. Not her eyes. And then she's like dead or whatever. And so that's, that seems supremely Omega Tron painful. I imagine the radiation also fucking sucks. Because, like, if you're alive after that, you mean, oh, no, don't say that. Anyway, if you're alive after that, pretty rough. Um, that's what happens after that. Do you All think right, so- Typhus talks to the pox walkers like he would a dog? Like, you said that he made them all sit in the air vents of the ship. Yeah, they're chilling in there. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, go go over there. Go sit. No, 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 no. That's a bad pox walker. You go sit in the engine Get that vents. out of your mouth. Bobby, <laughs> stop biting your brother. I absolutely do believe that, It would yes. be, like, the most frustrating part of being Typhus is trying to control a hundred brainless people to do things. I only have he 30 in my this. work. You chose to give them plus one strength. I don't understand why you would do this. It's fair. Ridiculous. Real fair. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, I've skipped past a large portion of all the Imperials are dying. Oh, God, they're dying. They're all dying. And um, they, the, uh, so I haven't been talking about the systems because, frankly, my brain just cannot process it. I will not retain the information. I remember from the book, there's a lot of systems. There, yeah. So here's a map. That does that again. Great audio content. You can see a relatively uh, fifteen systems on oh, on yeah. the. I can't. I can't do it. It's too. There's hard. a lot of like little like three tri system tri world systems on there too. Yeah, the, right. the map Nurgle has a lot again. of like the Nurgle, the sacred number of three, and that triangle circle thing all over the place there. Three is actually a really big thing, and like John said, uh, it is all actually connected, and that does come up later. Um, oh, is it more tearing in his stupid fucking clocks again? Because I'm no. done with that. <laughs> How do you feel about your new terrain piece? You know, I love it, and I have two. I've assembled one. I, I'm going to order some LEDs for the second one to make it extra special. Cool. Large. Fan. Now, what I'm going to need, what I'm going to need you to do is buy another 14 billion of them and put them all across this system and interconnect them so you can do a big ritual. Okay, Patreons, calling on you guys here. 14 million of these. <laughs> Billion. That, that's oh. what it takes. Okay, give me a second. Uh, time. Every person on Earth is going to need to buy me, like, three. Uh, so, good. Patreons, I need <laughs> 5.6 E9 monies. <laughs> Please and thank you. Yeah. Great. Send it directly to. I don't have anything after that. Anyway, uh, so it, then it talks about uh, Hepnus Klang for a little bit more. Uh, and Klang is, uh, I like, okay, so the description of him is j- essentially he's like a giant flatbed without the truck part and it floats. And there's a bunch of brains in there. There's a bunch of metallic, probably, I swear to God, they're definitely not artificial con- consciousness please stop looking at me please stop touching them i'm not doing anything heretical please stop looking at me uh, and he's like 40 feet of that uh and not six feet, fancy not 10 feet yeah. or 12 neither 15 40. or 18 or 24 but 40 feet of heresy which is yeah. by the way if you have a warhammer band that you do punk rock songs to 40 feet of heresy is actually a pretty great name it's pretty good that's pretty kick-ass I agree. Uh, so, uh, Heptus Clang's whole thing in this book is that he sucks. Uh, and then yeah. he's stupid and he... Oh. <laughs> yeah, he sucks and he's stupid and he's dumb. And he's bad. Um, so, what he's doing right now is... So, Chaos is here. Chaos is obviously completely inimical to the Adeptus Mechanic's faith. He's just kind of sitting in a room thinking about it. He's like, man, if the Omnissiah is real, then my machines could never get corrupted but my machines are getting corrupted, but the Omnissiah is real, so they could never get corrupted, but they're getting corrupted, but, and that just continues. Um, so he's stuck in the loop. That's like six, stuck in a loop. six pages of this book is dedicated to the self conversation. <laughs> There's a lot of internal know? monologue in this book, actually, is what I remember. It's, it's quite strange. There's the little plus signs and like data entry. It's bad. Proposition. Nah, 
<laughs> the proposition, not <laughs> uh. So he's just kind of sitting in this room. Uh, he decides instead of helping all of the other Imperial forces, what he's going to do, he's going to, he's going to tell every single admic uh, bit of personnel to just leave. Uh, actually stop fighting and come back and sit at the gates. Do that instead. Instead of helping all those dudes, just leave. It's fine. Uh, so they do that. And uh, even more of all of the Imperials do the big die and they do the big die a lot. There's this picture of a screaming ball Holland and he's doing the big die. Uh, so what I don't like about this book is that all of the admin characters are big and stupid and dumb. I think I talked about this last time. Uh, <laughs> for the love of God, please. Uh, but not even a page later. Um, oh, also Rodigus is here, and he's on the cool uh, water planet. Oh, because his yeah his um his like title is the Rain Father. Uh, oh, which yeah. I actually, which I think is pretty cool. He shows up in uh, the Deacon of, uh, sorry, uh, spoilers for the Deacon of Wounds. Uh, he shows up in that at the end, and he's he's like he brings the rain, and it's it's not the rain; it's it's big horrible worms, dollar bills. Oh <laughs> no, worms! It's, it's big horrible worms, and they scream at you. Uh, yeah, really uh, loudly. So cool. Like there's ah. This guy is frustrating. The worst loud. rain, dude. Just a screaming rain. I will uh, reenact how the uh, audiobook author did it. Oh, sure. Let uh, me turn it down a little bit before you do go. <laughs> for sure. Uh, <laughs> they make that noise. <laughs> what? Like, so. Make- what were you doing when you were listening to that scene? Like, <laughs> I was, I was furiously work. masturbating. Did you like stop and just start <laughs> laughing? Like, because I would yes. have such a hard time. <laughs> so the scene that that first happens in is actually like super scary, and then the worm starts saying "dee dee," and it's not scary anymore. And I'm also at work. Man, so the worms sound like weird. Dexter from the show Dexter's Laboratory. That's what I thought. <laughs> So he's on the the cool water planet. I wish he would leave because I really like that cool water planet. But it's it's kind of fucking explode or whatever. Fathom. He's gonna he's gonna yeah fathom. He's gonna take all the water. I'm gonna be really sad about it. Um, well, I mean, I guess he does open a giant skin mouth again. The skin he opens a giant skin mouth in the North Pole, and then you know they throw up a bunch of Nurgle demons, and then there's the war for that. And then you can put your cool narrative battles on this cool water planet. Here's another setting for you guys to have. Anyway, oh cool. Um, yeah. So did you... wait, but there's no bottom to the planet, right? It's just water. No, it's just water, and then on top is just a uh, fuck ton of imperial like oil rig type structures. Um, oh, oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 like a obviously like a water harvesting thing, right? Because it's always refills or whatever. Um, so right. they they just con- they continue to harvest that on these giant like oil rig type things. It's it's actually really cool. You get very scant bits of art of it, but I, I'm, a, I'm I'm a huge fan. Um, I haven't talked about Lord Zed, Lord Zaid. Isn't that sure the bad that guy one. from Power Rangers? Yes, that, it is. That's Lord Zed. Oh, I'm Same sorry. Thing. Our Canadian listeners would all understand what Taylor say. Uh, so <laughs> that's a real subtle joke right there. I'm not going to. Uh, I got it. Uh. So we said the magic words of Power Rangers villain. So I did. Uh, Lord, yeah, Lord Zed, Zied, Zied, is going to be uh, Ivan Ooze from now on. That's what I'm going to call him. <laughs> okay. The best Power so, Ranger villain. Uh, tell me about Lord Zed. Uh, Lord Ivan Ooze is a uh, Lord Discordant working for Abaddon. He is the guy who came to Typhus to tell him what to do, essentially, on behalf of... Um, on behalf of Abaddon, they're going to go blow up Metallica because it's a big, bad place of big, dumb Imperials who need to die. Uh, so he's here. He's got, like, 300 demon engines with him. That's kind of his thing, obviously, as a Lord Disco, right? Oh, like, dude, I took that to LVO. Some... That army sucks ass. <laughs> it's probably better now. They hit on threes. It's maybe. fair, but it still isn't a great choice for You know what? I don't disagree. It probably still fucking sucks. Uh, so he's here. He doesn't do much uh, till later. Um, so all the gates are under besiegement. The demons are here now. And now that the demons are here, uh, one of the really cool characters show up, uh, and I'm not going to read her whole name cause it's long as fuck. 
No, please do. Uh, I like, insist at this point oh, you do. God, fuck! I need to find it. Shit. Let okay, me let me hype you up further. You ready? Oh, I, I can't. Oh no. Oh, I've already lost it. Yeah, that's fair. That that feels pretty fair. That was um, the name. It was Airhorn, Airhorn, <laughs> Airhorn, Sad Trombone. Oh. So Lord Throxoplasmosis is doing his big stuff. He's doing his big thing. He's doing he's been doing a big dab. Making skis. And, right. And a uh, a strike force cruiser shows up. And with them come the uh Admech clades of Demos. And Demos is the forge world that works the Grey Knights. So guess who's in the strike cruiser that came with them? And this is really cool because we've never actually seen them do anything. They have a paint scheme in the eighth edition codex. But yeah, this is the first do. time, yeah, it's actually super sick. Uh, this is the fi- first time they've ever shown up and done anything. And they have, like, serious anti-demon tech, as you would probably expect. Uh, and they just clown all over Thruxel Plasmosis and his demon friends, as, again, you would expect. Uh, and so they're not mentioned very much throughout the book, but, like, Demon Hunter Skitari is fucking awesome. Um, so that's a that's cool thing. Cool. Yeah, it's a pretty cool thing to theme around or whatever. So with this, so they show up, and then the House Raven Knights show up. So Typhus and Lord um, Ivan Ooze sent off a force of word, word bears and Alpha Legionaries to stop um, the Raven Knights from finding out about this Metallic in war for as long as possible. Uh, they immediately don't do that and go do their own thing. Remember that place with remember that place with the miners? That's where they go. Uh, and as you can tell by the air quotations that you can hear through my words. Literally, we uh, can hear those air quotations. I have never felt the need to specify your air quoting because your voice is saying so much with it. It is I, true. I try really hard. I send the air through my vocal cords to try to create expression through the movement of my lips or whatever. I'm not really sure how the mechanicism works. Um, it's your skin. So they show up. It's your throat skin. Ah, I hate the skin. Um, so they show up <laughs> on, <laughs> they show up on Daku and they're like, well, where's our cult? We fucking, we, it took so long to put a fucking cult here. The thing we want to do is here. And then Gene Steeler cult to show up and they're like, Hey, no, we're doing this thing now. It's me. I'm here. And then they shoot them with laser guns, but then the fight doesn't end. Um, it's the, it's the Daku series. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, so they immediately betray their, uh, like within the minute, their Death Guard allies and the Raven Knights show up. They bail the Imperium out. Um, they drive, they, they drive along with the Demon Hunters, Katari and the Grey Knights. They drive back to three pronged assault. And so Typhus is like, fucking fine, fine. I was going to use this big summoning ritual for a special occasion, but I guess I'm going to use it now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ruined the surprise. So I hope you're he, real proud of yourselves. <laughs> yeah. So he uh, he uses the death of seven planets to open up a, who would have thought, a big fucking portal to the warp and a bunch of big demons come out and they go and they fight. And man, something else happens. Fuck shit, goddamn. Uh, also, people get sick. They experience engorgisms and explode. Engorgimatitis, yeah. Engorgimatitis, yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, also, just getting next to Typhus is a death sentence to anyone not of Nurgle. Uh, it describes it a couple times throughout the book. Um, that if you if you are just near him, you you just die. You just fucking melt and die. Oh, also speaking, how do of you Typhus, think he like staffs the terminus s? Because there's a lot of like human level crew who have to do shit on the bridge. And you think after time it's going to be really hard to replace all of the fucking pilots you accidentally murder by being a disease vector. So in Lords of the Silence, there's also kind of that problem. I think the ship just grows the crew. I think, honestly, the Terminus Assessed, I think it just grows it. And because uh, he sits yeah. in a big weird throne. He probably just tells the Poxwalkers what to do. You're right. He's giving them strength five. They can turn the wheel. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the wheel can be turned at strength four. No. Uh, yeah. Oh, also, Jug Hilda, who we talked about earlier, that big stab she put through his chest, uh, it ain't healing. Uh, it's it's still burning. He's not healing. I think it was because he looked at her weird, or she looked at him weird. 
I think that's why. Maintained eye contact. It's a power move right. through, through the whole through thing. The, through the bee. Established dominance. <laughs> she got eaten by bees. Um, so his skin is all big, dumb, and stupid, much like all skin. Uh, so much more fighting, more fighting. Uh, the okay, yeah. So the um, the assault is redoubled when um, he can he completes his big ritual. Uh, he opens up the maw in space, and they call it the maw. And through the maw is just constant warp energy, big bad, get sick, have more skin, get cancer, radiation time. Um, like Galactus and the Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer movie. The right. Fantastic Galactus. The big, the big dust cloud. The big dust so, cloud yeah. of space debris. Yeah. Uh, he opens up that in in the Metallican sector itself, like uh, as uh, in a classic chaos move. He doesn't fight the defenses like a big man. He just bypasses them. He just goes around. Space is a three D plane. You can just go around. But all of these planets are flat. This <laughs> picture, That's these pictures, they're all flat. He used he used chaos to go around. Um, did he go for the ice wall? Sucks. Yeah. 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 He, he broke past the ice wall. The government won't tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> the government will turn off your downforce. If you keep talking well, about Antarctica, like, no, uh, no, not the downforce. I need that to live. Typhus is currently like trying to kill everyone through plagues. Whereas the Metallica dude is just like, ah, jokes on you. I radiated them all to death already. Right, so he does that a couple more times with the last one. He he, you know, hits his own allies kind of just for fun, because uh, he purposefully put the most insane possible tech priests on those ships to kill people because it was cool because they had skin. Again, don't like that. Um, <laughs> so Typhus uses this big warp breach to directly assault Metallica. That's kind of where the book leaves off. Is like the ground war for Metallica has finally begun. Um, he drops a bunch of dudes down. Uh, they destroy Solari Anchorage, um, where we live, uh, blows up a bunch of boats. Um, oh, Danny's a ship captain, too. Fuck, this book is hitting too close to home. It's Yeah, it's getting too realistic. I don't know if I like these new GW books. So, uh, the uh, Clang? Yeah, Clang. Uh, he's, so, a giant warp breach shows up in his house, and he's like, oh... Maybe I, maybe I should take this seriously more than not at all. Because throughout the book, a lot of him, <laughs> a lot of Imperials are dying because there's just absolutely no coordination at all. All of the battles are fought as individual struggles between like regiments and Victoriums and like preceptories and warbands or whatever. There's no concerted defense. Like when they drove back, uh, drove back chaos from the gates. Initially, they had a trans- chance to strike back, but the big machine man was actually like, "Well, I mean, chaos probably isn't real, anyways. So if you all Fair. just stand completely still, it'll be fine." <laughs> chaos is they like a T Rex. Yeah. And then it wasn't fine at all. Um, if it sounds like I've not talked about Drukari in a book where, that they're in and share a third of the rules, uh, it's because they're not in it very much. Uh, they confirmed that uh, Lilith probably killed that uh, that Palantine lady, and that's it. She leaves. Uh, her her infiltrators make life a little bit harder for some guardsmen, and then they all die, and then that's it. So that kind of sucks. But the book closes off with Throxoplasmux Plogs Moxus getting clowned on because uh, he didn't even make it through his, his assigned gate. He didn't even fucking make it through. Um, and yeah, the ground war has now begun. Amazing. Uh, so yeah, that... I've skipped. Sorry. No, no, you go. Go. Uh, I've skipped past some stuff mostly because I don't want to talk about Marines. Um, it's fair. No one does. Yeah, every time Marines show up, Little. they. They like break the like break the stalemate and they're big cool and they're you don't have any fucking rules in this book. Get out. Stop. <laughs> stop stop being the cool people in this book. I will fucking lose my mind. They're they're the uh, protagonists, dude. That's what the Marines uh, are. I will literally literally skin my face. 
I swear to God. Because you hate skin. We've established this. Yeah, okay, so, Metallica, calm down over there. <laughs> so you, this is the end of uh, the Book of Rust, uh, which is the the first part of Wars on Chardon, or Chardon, which we assume is going to go forward. After the lore of this book, what factions right. do you see coming next in book two, which uh, will be like the Book of Restoration, I guess, because, you know, or Rustoleum? Orcs, guaranteed. Uh, you, I'd, like, I would be so surprised if orcs don't show up. Uh, I definitely think Gene Slayer cults are going to be there. I think there's going to be more expanded rules for uh, Chaos that isn't Death Guard. Uh, there's a lot of non-Death Guard Chaos Marines present. There's a lot of Black Legion. Th- like, the Thousand Suns are here. The Alpha Legion is here. Word Bearers are here. So I think we're going to see rules for Chaos Marines in general. Uh, I think we'll... Let me see. Because honestly, outside of that... Uh, oh, Guard. Guard, I think. Guard and Sisters as well, I think, will be in the next book for sure. So, question. The Gene Spieler so, cultists in the, in this in this book, are yes. they of a particular cult? They are. I don't have it written down, but it's like... Uh, uh, it's a Cult of the Interworm, um, which is not a cult I'm familiar with. Interesting, uh, okay. Yeah, they... Their fight, their fight with uh, the Alpha Legion and Thousand Suns is technically continuing, but at the the final like bit in this book, the Thousand Suns and Alpha Legion capture their patriarch, so they're probably oh. kind of, right. So they're probably kind of done there. Um, but uh, where there's one Gelin Steeler cultist, there's four hundred trillion more. So I'm assuming they're just on other planets, and we'll see them there, which will be cool. I fucking love that army. Um, that's honestly, yeah. So genes to their cult, guard or sisters or and or and or sisters, orcs, more chaos marines, and probably regular marines because they they are here. It's been a while that since they've be- had some new rules. It's only fair that they yeah, get true. some more, right? Um, yeah, no, mm, yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, the great knights, the great knights were here, so maybe them. That would be kind of cool. I would love for that already to get updated. Uh, instead uh, of a please. marine presence, just have like a green neck presence. Please, please give them their wound. That's, that's, <laughs> that's all they ask. They ask for so little. <laughs> they come on. They came across the entire galaxy. They blew they up across the before you across. again to ask for one more wound. <laughs> please, please don't increase my price either. I'm already like 22 points. I would be really sad. Please, I'm just, just, I'm just a young strike marine. I'm picking you. Amazing. <laughs> I can't take it. Taylor, I can't uh, take this. Thank yeah, you so much up? for summarizing the lore of uh, Chardon, uh, Words on Chardon, uh, Book of Rust, Book One, uh, available today uh, if you're listening to this live. Sometime in the past, if you're listening to this in the future. And how the fuck did you get this if you were listening to this before Saturday? <laughs> Taylor, Fair fuck. We're going to have yes. you back again in the future Sean. for more Taylor, um, which is awesome. the official name of this. Thank you so much for coming in. Danny. Anything you want to add in before we cut out of this bonus episode I dragged you out on a Tuesday night to do? No, dude, this was awesome. Thanks, Taylor, for coming by and uh, giving us the rundown on that book. I can't wait to read it. It sounds uh, it sounds like it has some really cool scenes in it, for sure. Yeah, it does. Uh, thanks for having me on. I promise to not be so objectively terrible next time. False. I have <laughs> been right, promising. Right, for sure. Be- All right. I'll take you up on that challenge. <laughs> oh, fuck. If, Come on. You can't, you can't call me on it. If fuck. you have to stop, I have to stop. Uh, but for Mob Rules, I've been John. I've been Danny. I've been me. And we'll see you later. <laughs>